We're working diligently to follow all the leads that we have. Um, I'm not going to get into the weeds about what those leads are or the tactics behind what we're doing. I will tell you that as far as the community goes, there's two ways of looking at this. He's either within a five mile radius or he's in the rest of the world and we're searching both. So uh, with that, I will say that if your um, folks in the community, if you see something and it's suspicious to you, you can guarantee it'll be suspicious to us. Let us know. Call 911, call the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Um, you can call 919-245-2900. Um, you can call me at my cell phone, 919-612-0003. I promise you will not get a recording. I will answer. Um, again, to the folks in the community, if you see something, it might not mean anything to you, but it might mean something to us. So even if it's just a very small thing, a detail, let us know. We certainly want to follow up on that. And I'll now turn it over to Director Sheet. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, as, as we begin, I'm just going to provide some very brief information to build on our, our briefing from earlier this morning. Uh, I want to start by thanking all of our law enforcement partners that are working collaborative, collaboratively with us uh, to bring offender Alston back into custody. And Sheriff, we appreciate uh, your leadership as we're working together to, to bring this, uh, this man back into our custody. Uh, our staff will be on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until offender Alston is returned to custody. Um, one update on our staff, uh, the staff that were directly involved this morning. Uh, good news is, thank God, they are okay. Uh, they were not seriously injured, and, and we are thankful for that. Uh, and, and just to reiterate uh, the sheriff's message, if, if you see anything, please notify local law enforcement, 911, whatever is the quickest avenue to do that. Thank you. I do want to highlight a couple of things about the partnership and the working relationship between the agencies involved, all the way from the hospital police chief down to adult corrections. Um, everyone has come together. We are at a unified location working together. I have also reached out to the North Carolina Sheriff's Association's executive Vice President and General Counsel Edward Caldwell, Edwin, Edmund Caldwell, Eddie Caldwell, and he has activated the Sheriff's Helping Sheriffs Network. That is a network of sheriffs that are notified by the association that another sheriff needs help. We now have at least three agencies en route to us to assist us with assignments this afternoon. This will be ongoing and we will broaden that request for assistance as needed. Um, at this time, I'd entertain questions if there are any briefly. Um, earlier you guys uh, mentioned that the suspect was able to break free from the officers. How does something like that happen? Someone has an intent to go where you don't know they're going to go and they run. And it happens bang, bang. The gentleman, as soon as he put his foot on the ground to get out of the vehicle, took off running. Did the two officers take after him? They did. That's correct. Um, he was also coming from uh, Birdie Correctional Center. Um, so why come all the way to Orange County to get medical care? Ramon Austin is a, a resident of Orange County, was before he went to prison. Um, I would assume, and I don't know what he was coming here for, that's not been given to me. He had been treated here before, I believe and this is his home, and maybe that was for continuity of care. I would have to ask the physicians, and they won't tell me, so it's, that's that. Sheriff, earlier um, we weren't sure if there was a wide shelter in place, um, but what's the message to the public right now? Uh, to just, you know, you, you say this, if you see something, say something, but what should they do right now? Should they stay inside? Uh, you know, can they still go outside? So thank you for that, and I, I will say that every day, things bad happen around us that we don't know about. We know that this happened and so we can just tell folks what happened and let them act accordingly and carry on their daily lives. Uh, the one thing I try to keep in my heart all the time is I'm not going to let somebody's wrongdoing interfere with me living my life. I will say that you have to be precaution, take precaution every day in your lives. Um, if you're in the area of that the hospital, 
uh, this morning would have been a good time to take precaution as the day has gone on seven, eight, nine, ten hours and we have not had any reported sightings. I'm not going to say lower your level of precaution, but you've got to live your life. Could you clarify those leg restraints that were on the offender uh, before he got out of the vehicle? I mean, you know, just trying to understand a little bit more about how he could have gotten out of those. So they are they're much like a handcuff, but they're a little bit larger to fit around your ankles. And it's connected by a chain, which is about two and a half feet long, and it's designed to keep you from getting a large gate if you decide to walk or run away. It also, when you put your foot down, puts pressure against your Achilles, which slows you a, a, a good bit. It's uncomfortable. How he got them off, I don't know. That's always the case, whether it's apparent or not. We investigate every aspect of what's going on from the time they left the facility to the time they got there and he broke away. Every bit of that will be under investigation. Yes, ma'am. Is there any indicator that he might have made contact with someone as he was in prison uh, you know, to plan something like this? Well, people are in contact with their families all the time. Whether or not they planned anything or not, that's still something we're looking into. I'm not going to get into that at this time. Can you tell us what level of uh, what level the inmate is and what kind of restraints uh, are required for the, uh, an inmate of that level? So, um, again, the policies and procedures of the Department of Adult Corrections are Director Ashees. It's my understanding that leg restraints and shackles on your hands and a belly chain is what was in place. In closing, I just want to again reiterate the partnership of the law enforcement agencies, state, federal, and local that are involved has been amazing this morning. And we're doing what we do, and we feel confident that we will take the subject into custody. One more thing quickly. Do, do corrections officers carry, carry guns on them? Yes. And so this level of, of restrictions, you know, the, the shackles and then the handcuffs, uh, was that the appropriate you know, level of, of protection on, on yes. the Yes. Yes, and is is policy a lot of times dictates what we do when we deliver an inmate wherever, and the same with the adult corrections. Um, we have secure lock boxes that we put our guns in sometimes when we're moving inmate from one place to the other, and that protocol was followed this morning. Thank you very much. Under that assumption, the officers didn't have an opportunity to talk to him. That's correct. Thank you. Now, we do have some new flyer, flyer, flyer for y'all. What's new here is we have a photo on here that we didn't have earlier today. Um, the most recent photo on here, the March 